Okay, so today we are going to be going over some basic file streaming operations in Java. Now, what we're going to be using is a scanner and also a print writer for writing. And let's get started. So, for creating a file, the first thing we're going to do is actually make a test file just to test our stuff with. So, we're going to go to uh, highlight our project, and then we're going to go to a File, New, and choose a new file. Now, you can pretty much call the file anything you want, but I'm going to call mine data.txt. And the file extension is actually pretty important um, because it will tell the computer how to open the file. Now, a txt file is just a plain data file, so it doesn't have any metadata or formatting data in there. And it's just the best one to open because it's just the simplest form. It's just plain old text. Right? So what we're going to do is have it. Uh, created there. Now what we have is the data file has been created in the project folder. Right? You can actually create these other files into the other folders, but when we open a file in Java, what's going to happen is that it's, the computer will look for it in the project folder by default, and then afterwards you can direct it elsewhere, uh, which can be actually which will be covered in another lesson. Okay, so going back to it, uh, so first we have data, and let's just throw in um, some basic uh, stuff in there. So we'll go data one, data two, data three and data four. All right, so just uh, let's do five, data five. So let's say five pieces of data in there. All right, and they're all right now just strings. Okay, so what we have here is uh, our main program. Now, this should be familiar. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm sure you know how to use a scanner. So um, let's take a look at how a scanner works. All right, so we have scanner input is equal to new scanner using system in. Okay, and the system in is basically directing it to use the, uh, the keyboard. Okay, so okay, now we need to import the scanner, so just press Control shift o and that will import the scanner. Okay, and then we're going to make a string, we'll just call it, um, I don't know, data, data, okay, is equal to, and I'll just make it an empty string for now. Okay, and then all we're going to do is say data is equal to input dot next. Okay, and that will just fetch the next thing. Okay, and what we'll do is just echo it here. Okay, so we'll just echo this back and say the data was data. All right, and let's go test this out here. Okay, and it uh, looks like I forgot a prompt there, so let's just put another one in there. System will print line. Okay, please enter um, a word. Okay, and we'll just take away, make it a print instead of a print line. Okay, and so I'll run this program here. Please enter a word. Okay, and I'll just say Tao of Chow. Okay, the data was Tao of Chow. All right, so basically it's just a simple echo program. Now, the basics of file streaming is essentially the same thing as this. Okay, now what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to make a file object. Okay, so we're going to say file. Now, a lot of times when people teach this, they go like this, file, file, is equal to new, file. And then they'll just go like something like file.txt. All right. I don't know why programming instructors often do this, but it's really confusing. All right. So file is just the type of object that we're using. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call this in file. Now in file is uh, just because we're using it for reading. Okay, it's the inputting file. All right, and the file that we're this is actually the file in our hard drive that we're trying to access. Okay, and ours, as we can see over here, is called data.txt. Okay, so it's going to be data.txt. Now I'm getting redlined for this because the computer doesn't know what a file is, so I have to actually just import it. Control Shift O again. Okay, as Java IO file. Okay, now what we have here is our scanner is was looking at the keyboard, but instead we're going to redirect it to the in file. 
Okay, so the new scanner is looking at the in file, and now we're getting another error. Uh, it's not really an error, a warning saying that it's an unhandled exception. Now, in programming, an exception is an error, or it's something that might cause a, like a, basically a fatal error that you have to address as the programmer. You have to tell the program how to deal with it. Okay, so it's saying, what do I do if I can't find the file? Okay, so what we do is we go to main, and we tell main to throw IO exception. Okay, so throws. Okay, throws IO exception. Now the computer doesn't know what an IO exception is, so we have to import it again. Okay, so we have to import a few things. Now there's different things that you can do, and in a future video we'll cover this. But essentially, what this means is just uh, just pass an error off to the user, so just crash. Right. Um, later on, what we can do is we can use a try and catch, and we can try to open the file, and then if it doesn't open, then we can try and catch it by doing something else. All right. But for now, we're just going to throw the IO exception at the user. Right. So, for instance, I'll give you an example of what this would look like. If I make this datas.txt, it's not going to be able to find. It's not going to be able to find the file. So when I run it, I get an exception, and this is what a throw looks like. Okay, so if I look at data.txt, okay, it says please enter a word. Okay, notice that there was no word input here. Okay, well there was, but just not from the keyboard. And it says the data was data1. Okay, now the reason why it says the data was data1 is because data1 is the first data in the, in the uh, file. Okay, so essentially what that means then is we can get rid of this. Okay, so we don't need the prompt anymore. And essentially, um, yeah, like we can actually just get rid of this here as well. Actually, I would just leave it like that because I'm going to use it later. Okay, so um, essentially all we did is just make a file by using a file object and redirect the scanner to read from that file. Now, one important thing is that you have to know the layout of the file, right? So you have to know the order of the data. So sometimes you might have like, let's say you're doing like some sort of fantasy game and you had like the character's name, uh, strength, health, luck, and, and then gold or something like that. You'd have to know the order that they appeared in. Um, otherwise, it would be very difficult for you to actually search the file. Now there's ways to actually search the file. Um, you know, and you could actually have labels and markers in the file and stuff like that. But it's just easier if you know the order of the data so that you can just read it straight out. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, let's go on. There's another thing that is helpful for this. Uh, so what if you want to read all the data in the file, right? Uh, well, there's an actual easy way to do this. Okay, so the first thing uh, is we're just going to put this into a loop. Okay, so this is, uh, here, let's just uh, comment here. So opening a file object. Okay. Connecting a scanner to this file. Okay, well, to, we'll just say to in file. Okay, creating a string. I don't think I need to comment that. Okay, reading from the file. And here, just the echo. All right, I'm not going to comment that either. Well, okay, whatever. I'll comment it. Echoing. So we're going to put this into a loop and we're going to say while input dot has next. Okay, now it's remember remember we are not doing it to the file, to the file object, we're looking at the scanner. So as long as the scanner has something else to scan, okay, then we're gonna read from the file and echo back the uh, echo back whatever it is we read. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so the data was one, the data was two, data was three, data four, and data five. So we were able to read all of the data from the file, okay, just you know one after the other consecutively, just by using this simple while loop. So I should say before I move on though that you don't just have to print to the screen. Instead, you could uh, save it to an array. Okay, so you could have a counter and then just uh, store whatever it is into an array, and then just uh, increase the counter and then just keep saving it element by element into an array or whatever. All right. So, anyways, um, that's how you basically do file reading.
Okay, now what about file writing? So file writing is actually pretty simple as well. And I know everyone always hates it when people say things are simple, but this one I think really is. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is we are going to have to make a uh, in file or an out file. Okay, so I'm going to say file out file is equal to new file. Okay, and I'm going to connect that with one called output.txt. Uh, okay, um, a lot of times people, again, will just use the same one, but I'm just calling it output.txt just to be clear about uh, which one is which. I don't want you to get confused about data.txt and output.txt. Okay, so this is opening a file for output. Okay, now you notice that there is no output.txt here. All right, so we're just going to leave it and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, will we get an exception thrown or what's going to happen? Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say print writer, okay, and we'll call it uh, output is equal to new print writer. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to redirect this to the out file. Okay. Now, of course, we're getting redlined because it doesn't know what a print writer is, so we're going to import it. Okay, so we have the print writer output is equal to new print writer directing to the out file. Now, the print writer is essentially like system out print line, right? In fact, it's used in, in exactly the same way. So now, uh, when we want to output something, all we do is we say output dot, okay, and if you look, it's essentially all the same things that the um, that system all print line has. Okay, so we do instead of system all print line, we would say output dot print line. Okay, so output dot print line. Okay, and something like hello world. Okay, and okay, and then let's run this. Now we're looking for two things. First of all, what's going to be printed, and then the second thing is, um, well, is this what's going to happen with this output.txt? Like, will we get an error, or will it print, or what? So let's take a look. Okay, so no error. Okay, doesn't seem to be created. Okay, and just nothing seemed to happen, but we didn't get an error. Okay, the reason why is because you have to go to the project window and refresh. So let's go here. We'll just choose to refresh. Okay, now uh, you don't, you can't just click into the project window. You have to click actually on the project itself. So right click on the project, choose refresh, and you'll see output.txt has now appeared on there. So what happens if the file doesn't exist for outputting? Well, then it just creates an empty file and it lets you just use it. Okay, now it does not work that way for inputting though. Okay, so please be careful. If you're using inputting, the file has to exist, otherwise it's going to throw an error. For outputting, if the file doesn't exist, it just creates a new one. Okay, so let's open up output.txt and see what's in there. Okay, nothing's in there. Okay, well, why not? Okay, well, the reason actually is because we never close the out file. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to go and say output, which is the, uh, actually we have to close the print writer, dot close. Okay, so we have to close it at the end, and let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, so this is output, and open this up. Now here it says it's been changed, and this is a common thing you're going to see. And so we say yes, okay, and now our output appears. Okay, so it's important to make sure we close that uh, output stream up, um, otherwise it won't get written to. Now, here's the thing. What if we have it, so we have our output.txt, and it says hello world in it, and we want to just write a few more things to it. So I open up my file, and I say something like, I don't know, data1, or let's say, uh, child rocks, okay, or something like that. So I want to add, I want to write something else. Okay, so I go and run the program. Okay, seems to be fine. Check my output.txt. Okay, now if I just flick over to it, it's going to say just whatever before, but if I double click it, it's going to try and reopen it, and then it's going to see that it's been changed. So yes, 
Okay, and now it just says Chow Rocks. Okay, so the Hello World from before is gone. Okay, and what we call it is, is that it's just a straight up replacement. Okay, like, so what it does is it actually just uh, truncates the file. So it just actually just makes it down to zero size and then just rewrites it all over again. It does not append to the end of the file uh, by default like this. So then the question is, well, what if we want to append the file? Well, what we have to do is uh, we have to make things a little more complicated. Not terribly so, but just a little bit more. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we still make our out, our out file, but now what we have to do is we have to make a file output stream. Okay, and so what we're going to say file output stream, and I'll just call it FOS, okay, is equal to new file output stream. Okay, so new file, or F new FOS, file output stream. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to direct it to the file. Okay, so we're going to say uh, out file. Okay, and then we are going to put comma true. Okay, and what that means is uh, the true part is saying that we want, it's true for appending. All right, uh, you can put false for appending if we want. Now we're getting redlined again because we don't have it imported, so we'll just import that. Okay, and then our print writer, what we do is we just redirect our print writer to our FOS uh, file output stream. Okay, and what we'll do here is we'll just change this message here from Chow Rocks into, I don't know, Hello World again. Okay, oh, how about we just say the world? Okay, so it'll be Chow Rocks the world. All right, if it works. Okay, so let's take a look. We'll run it. Okay, seems to be fine. Switch over. Doesn't seem to have worked because we didn't refresh it. Okay. And then Chow rocks the world. All right, so for appending, all we have to do is just actually just create a new, an, uh, basically an, an intermediate object that we have to go through called the file output stream. Okay, and then instead of directing the print writer directly to the file, we direct it to the file output stream. And what that allows us to do is just uh, append the file. So in conclusion, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple to do some inputting and outputting with uh, files here. So remember, uh, you have your in files, okay, create your scanner, direct the scanner to the in file, and then basically use this while loop. Theoretically, you should close the, uh, the in file at the end, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and then here, this is, it's very important when you're outputting to actually output the, to close the print writer at the end, right? Otherwise things won't get written. All right. But, um, yeah, it's most of the time I found that you can usually get away with not appending, but it just depends on your application. Um, you know, if you have to, then great. It's not that it's just like one extra line of code pretty much to do that. So anyways, if you do have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment bar. Remember to like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.